You guys like that? That's how that's how I focus my uh, my camera. Because you guys are uh, you guys are this far away. <laughs> so this is my I ordered online. Oh, by the way, welcome back to another episode of Fairy Talk. My name is Nick. Um, but no, I was focusing the camera, and uh, I thought you guys might get a kick out of that. It's a wooden dowel, and I reach over and I I play around with the button, and let's see if I can get it. And now it's focused on me. I did order a, um, I don't know, infrared remote from Amazon. And uh, <laughs> when I was checking prices on that, I thought that was completely hilarious. It was on Amazon for my Nikon camera. And uh, the remote was $1.88, I think it was. And that included shipping. So, <laughs> But then when I ordered it, I realized it's, it's probably coming out of China because it said it'll be here in six to eight weeks. Which brings up a funny point. As a kid, I would get, I think it was Boy's Life magazine or one of these magazines to where in the back they always had these ads um, where you could order different things. You could order like the Rambo knife or um, an ant farm or, <clears throat> excuse me, or any of these types of things. And as a kid, you'd always want to order everything in that back section of this particular magazine. Um, but but your mom typically would, would hate just about anything that was in there. And... Um, that was back when, to, to mail order things, it took six to eight weeks. And as a kid, I, I would get often confused, and I'd be like, oh, it takes 68 weeks to get that? Oh, how long is that? That's over a year. <laughs> I don't know. Kids get, kids get lost in, in certain things. Anyways, uh, show and tell a little bit. Um, well, not necessarily. Um, I had a bunch of questions on the Harbor Freight... Uh, or on the on the diamond stones, and, the, and they're from Harbor Freight. And they are color-coded if you don't use them. If you use them, um, they barely become color-coded. Uh, what I liked about this one was it had four separate grits, uh, that, which they are calling 200, 300, 400, and 600. Um, is this a perfect solution? And, of course, it fits tight in here, so I can't get it in. Um, is this a perfect solution? No, I mean, if you're going to be hand planing and having chisels and all sorts of tools that you want to sharpen, that's eh, probably a temporary thing, you know. Um, but they serve me well. And, you know, they're on, uh, they typically are on sale at Harbor Freight for like $12.99, $13.99, something like that. Um, you know, not that you know anything at Harbor Freight ever goes on sale. It seems like, well, pretty much everything's always on sale. But... <laughs> So anyway, yeah, they, they, they do all right. Uh, eventually, I want to upgrade to some nicer stones and diamond stones, whatever. Uh, oh, one thing I didn't like about them is when I went to go flatten my hand plane uh, a couple videos ago, there wasn't a coarse enough grit. So um, so just it took forever, and I, and I kind of went to coarser sandpaper. Anyways, I digress. Um, you know what? I normally turn my phone on vibrate. And that brings up my next point. Distractions in the shop. I'm not Mr. Like Safety Police by any by any means. But uh, I did have a couple of people, um, and I was talking to a couple other YouTubers and things of that nature, about how we film, and um, I guess you'd call them distractions, but you, you have a camera pointed at a spinning blade. And, you know, you're, you're trying to make sure you get that shot, because a lot of times on the table saw, all you see is, is my, my big arm. But... Um, so anyways, that brought up the, the, the topic for discussion, which was distractions in the shop. Before I ever made a YouTube video, I would not only put my phone on vibrate when I was out in the shop, but I would also take it out of my, uh, my pants pocket and put it somewhere else. Because I would oftentimes be on the table saw just pushing something through, and all of a sudden I'd feel it vibrate, and it's a subconscious thing. It's a, you know, you know you're on a table saw. You know you shouldn't be looking away. But it, it, just, it just seems to sometimes kind of grab your attention to where you're wondering what's vibrating, even though, you know, you realize it's your phone. So um, I guess if, if I ever offer safety tips, uh, that would be it, is distractions. Um, make sure that the kids aren't popping in and out while you're, you know, in the middle of, you know, you know on the router or on a power tool or thing like that. Um, Make sure that, uh, you know, you just, you're not distracted, you know. Oh, look at that. <laughs> I wasn't really distracted there. That was, that was acting. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's um, distractions. 
Anyways, I did have a show and tell that I, I do want to get to. I keep saying it, but I, I kind of wanted to end on the show and tell. The other point I had to bring up is creativity. And a couple messages back and forth and once again discussions. And I've had people ask about creativity, uh, not only myself, but where, where other people's, uh, other people, where other people get their creativity. And of course, I can only answer for myself, but uh, it, it just um, brought up a really good question. Is creativity teachable? And I thought about that for a long time. I thought about that for probably hours. And I came, kind of came to the conclusion that creativity can be instilled. It can be, to some degree, learnable. Um, but, and this is a tough one to answer because obviously it's a, it's a highly subjective answer. But um, I always had an affinity towards wanting to play with, um, you know, little trinkets and build little things and uh, tear apart remote control cars or you know, I was, you know, even if I'm in a long phone call or something, rather than pacing around like a lot of people I know do, I would, you know, I'd have to have be whittling something, you know, with a little whittling knife in my hand or, you know, I just, so from a very young age, it's just uh, the mechanical, the physical, the tangible, can you make something has always been in my brain. And I'm sure it's just kind of wired that way. But one thing I suggest if somebody says, well, I'm not creative, so I can't, I say surround yourself with creative people because the more you can learn from them and even if you just pick up one or two techniques and they, you know, you're watching them like, oh, wow, I never thought about doing it that way. I normally do it this way. And it just kind of exercises your brain to a certain degree to be more creative. And, um, you know, I'm sure there's an old saying in there somewhere about, you know, you are, you know, the sum of your uh, people that you hang around with. I, I'm, I'm like George Bush when it comes to these old sayings. Fool me once, save a penny. Fool me twice, you, you might have two pennies. I don't even know how that went when he butchered it up. But anyways, um, so yeah, that's, that's kind of my take on creativity is if you're ever feeling stumped, um, you know, try and surround yourself with people or immerse yourself in maybe other videos or books or, you know, just try and find different techniques. And that can oftentimes spark uh, the beginnings of creativity, and the more you exercise that that creative muscle in your brain, uh, I would only imagine that it would get better and rather than than atrophy. So, all right, now I get to go to my my show and tell. Finally, I'm going to try and do something a little different on here. Um, multi tools. I have this. Um, this is a Gerber multi tool. Um, I made this little. Does that get picked up? Um, this little belt clip out of mild steel, um, I don't know, probably 15 years ago. Um, it's rusted a little bit, but it's nice. It fits. Anyways, I'll get to my point. Um, this is one of my favorite multi-tools. And I say one of, because at, at, at one point I was kind of a, a multi-tool hoarder. Um, I also had the, the standard, the quintessential Leatherman. And for those, I mean, I, I, I don't know if you guys aren't familiar, but these multi-tools typically have a, a pliers that resides at its pivot point and a, a veritable uh, selection of knives, bottle openers, uh, flathead screwdrivers, nail files, stuff like that. Because when you're out in the wilderness, you know, you got to get that beer bottle open. So you, need a, you always need a bottle opener because, you know, if a blizzard's coming in or a tornado, the first thing I think of is, how do I get that bottle of beer or that bottle of Coke open? <laughs> but anyways, so I got this, the Handy Dandy Leatherman. Uh, this one I actually always stored in a nylon or ballistic nylon pouch with uh, a mag light and more of a tactical knife and just a couple other little things. This was always kind of, and it still is, my go-to, like if somebody says, hey, you know, uh, I got, I'm, I'm, I don't know, what, whatever, whatever their thing is, say, I, I'm doing this, I got, oh, can you help me with this? I'll always just snag this, throw it in my pocket, and um, it seems like about maybe 80% of the time, Whatever I need to fix, I can fix with that. Once again, getting back to the multi-tools. All right, let me set that down. My question to you is, and I kind of wanted to try something different here on Ferret Talks. The, the reason that this one was so cool is because it, instead of opening, it slides up and it locks into place. And in fact, you can kind of, and ta-da. Um, 
do you guys, and they actually do have kind of a size difference here, do you guys have little interesting tools? They don't necessarily have to be multi-tools, but little tools you've come across over the years, not even necessarily related to woodworking, that you found useful or they sounded really useful and then you acquired them and then you're like, wow, these are pretty much garbage. Um, but what I want you guys to do is, uh, I guess you could do it on my Facebook, but what I'm hoping is my, my Instagram. My Instagram handle, whatever title, is at Nick Ferry Builds. And um, take a picture of whatever you have, a little trinket, multi-tool, whatever. I was talking with a couple other YouTubers and they kind of had this bolt action loading um, screwdriver thing. Um, I'd love to see pictures. Put a picture on Instagram and then tag me in it, at Nick Ferry Builds, and then I'll get to see them. And uh, uh, I think they'll just be interesting for everybody to get to see them. In fact, I learned about hashtags about you know, three months ago. Maybe I can come up with... Um, we'll do hashtag unique hand tool. Hashtag unique hand tool. Even though unique's not a fun word to spell. But either way, Google it. And Google's... If you don't know how to spell Google, Google that. Well, Yahoo that. Anyways... Um, no, that would be interesting. Like I said, I've had a couple little trinkety, you know, sometimes I, I have a couple things around the shop that are the as seen on TV type uh, tools. And uh, it seems like my mom is always buying me some, oh, the, you know, this is the newest, latest and greatest. And like, yeah, maybe it is. But uh, yeah, I think I'm going to end at that point because I think I got through my list and it looks like I did. <laughs> well, until I see you guys next time, take care.